This is SCVI and I lead schools Eye on the Valley. I am Matt Watson. And you know our show. Our show, Eye on the Valley, is brought to you by SCVI and I lead schools. We're a network of charter schools with campuses in Castaic, Agua Dulce, Lancaster. We've got a fully accredited online school, a burgeoning homeschool program called I Lead Exploration. Visit us at iLeadSchools.org for more information about our schools. That's iLeadSchools.org. So yeah, we've got our eye on education here in Santa Clarita and across the nation. But like our show says, we keep our eye on the valley as well, bringing you everything you need to know about what's what here in the valley. And we try to do it while bringing a smile to your face because, uh, you know, I have, a, I have a personal philosophy not to do anything that I can't laugh while I'm doing it. Uh, yeah, it gets me in trouble sometimes, but, uh, but I'm okay with that. So, well, 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 first off, yesterday, yesterday was St. Patrick's Day. I hope you all enjoyed yourselves. How you feeling this morning? You all right? Patty, you doing all right this morning? Yes, sir. All right. Always. Good, good. You celebrate responsible. I appreciate it. All right. So now, now, now. In, in case you didn't know, it, it's it's my job to tell you all that this is indeed the most wonderful time of the year. You know, very few people realize that the crooner Andy Williams was actually singing not about Christmas time, but about mid March. Yeah, that's right. Mid March is the most wonderful time of the year. True story, and no, not because Andy Williams loved St. Patrick's Day, but because well, because he was a basketball fan. That's right, sports fans. It's March Madness time. The NCAA tournament has launched in earnest. Yesterday, we had a full slate of 16 games over 12 hours. Oh, gosh. It was just absolutely incredible. We've got another 16 in 12 hours today. Uh, more March Madness throughout the weekend. Oh, it's it's glorious. You know, yesterday, yesterday was a crazy day. That's why they call it March Madness. It was full of huge upsets. In fact, uh, gosh, the the hometown Bruins they they were almost one of those upsets. I was I was, Patty, I was as scared. I was as scared too. But I was as scared, Patty. The boys pulled through. Yeah, that's through. right, that's right. The the hometown heroes they they pulled through. Uh, they were almost the victims of such an upset. Yet uh, UCLA pulled it off in the end, eking past Akron, fifty seven fifty four, and and USC plays today. So. Uh, They've got the University of Miami on the docket. You can catch that on your lunch break. It'll be about lunchtime. And, uh, you know, there's another local team playing today. Cal State Fullerton has a ticket to the dance. That's right. The Titans play the mighty Duke Blue Devils later on this afternoon. Oh, I love it. It is indeed the most wonderful time of the year. It really is the best. In fact, while I was preparing for today's show last night, I, I, I caught... Patty, did you see this? The undisputed play of the day yesterday during the University of Indiana versus St. Mary's game. Uh, did you did you see it? No, but I heard my friends were telling me about it. I was oh, it so was, busy. It, it was beautiful, Patty. It was shortly after the start of the second half, uh-huh. and um, it, it was an interesting play. You know, one of St. Mary's uh, 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 shooters, he, he put up a shot that bounced off the rim and then went up and got stuck at the top of the backboard. Uh, <laughs> and, it, and it happens from time to time, That's right? That's true, yeah. And it, it's so weird. Everybody started standing around, you know, looking at the ball, couldn't figure out what to do. Right. And I'm thinking, where are those 50 balls you were warming up with? Just chuck <laughs> one up at it. So the referees were looking up. Well, then the center from St. Mary's comes in. He's like seven foot two, and he says, get me a broom. I'll, I'll, I'll poke it down. Well, he gets a broom, and he's jumping up, and he still couldn't couldn't reach it. Oh, wow. And so then, you know, it's funny watching all these guys, really <laughs> tall guys, trying to figure out how to get this thing down from a, a really high place. And uh, so, so somebody says, well, how about a chair? How about a ladder? And right. so they bring out this rickety old metal chair. And I'm thinking, Lord, don't put that big old boy on, on, <laughs> on that chair. And he, he puts one leg up there and his coach starts screaming, right? Right, of course. So, so no, the referee says, here, I'll get it. And the referee stood up on the chair. Well, the referee's like five foot seven. <laughs> And he's got the broom, and he's trying to be not even close. And everybody's just standing around, these giants, right? These huge guys standing around looking up at the ball, trying to figure out how to get it down. And finally, this teeny tiny little cheerleader, she's probably five feet tall at best. <laughs> Bless she her says, heart. we got it. And, and she and her partner, her yell leader, come out there, and, and he grabs her, scoops her up, put her, puts her on top of his shoulders, well, she was still not even close, and so, of course, he grabs her by the feet and just overhead presses her <laughs> up, and she just reach up, grab the ball, and he brings her down, and, and game on. It was, <laughs> it was fantastic. It was fantastic. But, you listeners, I don't want you to worry. The games don't start till later. 
Um, gosh, March Madness is great. Games don't start till later on today, though, um, and so you can stick around for the full show. We've got a great show for you. I'll be joined in just a minute by Wendy Ruiz. Wendy is the director of Little Eye Leaders Preschool. Have you got little ones? Do, do you have littles? Then then you've got to check out Little Eye Leaders. And, and you know, uh, uh, not to not to sell it too soon, but uh, uh, they're not just for littles either. So if, if you've got kids, you're going to want to listen to what Wendy has to say about her program. And uh, in hour number two, we'll be joined by Phil Lantis, Arts and Events Administrator for the City of Santa Clarita. He's going to share all that we've got going on in the way of arts and entertainment. You know, I remember, because I'm that old, I remember a time in Santa Clarita when you had to drive over the hill if you wanted anything like the high-quality arts and events that we have in town nowadays. So uh, I look forward to talking to Phil in the next hour. And yes, I know Big T has one or two fans, but they are vocal fans. So yes, Big T is back in town, and uh, and he's ready to go with some fun and games. So uh, we'll wrap up the show with uh, Big T's Five Minutes of Fame. And if you're into watch, if you're watching us on Facebook Live, you may have noticed that I've got a few guests in the studio with me. There's actually five young ladies that are going to be joining me this morning, but uh, I'm going to let you stay curious about them for a while. We'll get to them uh, just a little bit later in the show. Engineer Patty, let's let's go ahead and get started. My first yes, guest sir. is Wendy Ruiz. As I said, Wendy is the program director at Little Eye Leaders. She was previously in the she was previously the infant and toddler director at College of the Canyons Center for Early Childhood Education and an adjunct instructor for the ECE department. She worked with children and families for over 20 years in both the classroom setting as well as in administration. Full-time and tenured faculty at COC, Wendy also sits on the board of the Southern California Valley Association for the Education of Young Children as the WYOC co-chair. She is certified. She's a certified trainer in PITC, that is the Program for Infants, Toddlers, and Caregivers. Wendy received her bachelor's degree in child development from Cal State Northridge. She's a matador and her master's in child development and child life from the University of Laverne. And she's the director mentor for the California Mentor Program. And in 2018, she was the recipient of SCVI's Family Founders Award. She and her family were the Fam SCVI Family Founders Vision Award. That's right. So, Wendy, welcome back to Eye on the Valley. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. I want to go watch this scene of getting that ball down. Oh, yeah, yeah. I understand it's on YouTube now, it, and it is it, it is so cool. It is so cool. All these great big, you know, sequoias uh, uh, of men trying to figure out how to get their ball down so they can play, and this little bitty girl said, I got it. Oh, it was great. Yeah, I was going to have to go hop on. <laughs> so, Wendy, tell us about your program. Um, tell us about how Little Eye Leaders began. Sure. So, we've been around five years, just almost five years, and... Um, we started out, you know, probably 10 years ago as a thought and uh, part of the I lead school system and thinking that how, how do we create this amazing I lead school philosophy for preschool learners and, um, and I lead little I leaders was, was born and we, we grew slowly. We started out with, um, a preschool classroom for three-year-olds and a two-year-old classroom. And now we have, uh, goodness, we have young, young infants from six weeks and up. Oh. We have an older infant room, a two-year-old room, three preschool classrooms, and three school-age classrooms. Oh, gosh. Uh, so you've got little bitty babies all the way up to, yes. you said, school-age classrooms. So so what age range do you have at Little Eye Leaders? So our, we go as young as six weeks until 12 years old. Oh, wow. So it's not, like I said, it's not just for for littles. Gosh. Not at all. Okay, so let's talk about what makes your program unique. Um, so you've got a philosophy of play-based learning, inquiry-based learning. So can you tell us a little bit about what those two things are? What is uh, play-based and inquiry-based learning? And and then why is that important? Why is that something that you, uh, the direction that you chose to go in? Sure. So our program, we believe our program is very child-centered, learner-focused. 
where the facilitators are there to provide in these environments, provide experiences, but the learners are there to take the lead. And so even at the youngest age, so they we really follow their interests, design our curriculum based off of what their passion is and what their fascination is at that moment. And it's a lot of playing in water, playing in mud. The first thing they do is take their shoes off and just get in. And um, they just have a great time every day. They, You can see it on their faces. You can see everything they're playing with is now on their clothes or in their hair or somewhere of that sort. And they just really, um, it's their program, and the learners know it when they, as soon as they arrive, that it's it's, um, it's up to them what they're, what's going to happen that day. So they they learn about the world by immersing themselves in it, and and just kind of like you said, taking their shoes off and and, and getting <laughs> to to explore it. I love that you said that it it puts the education in the learners' hands because you know. Wendy, you've been a, a a student of education for decades now, as have I, and, and something that we know that universities have always been clamoring for is, you know, high schools, you've got to send us kids that are ready to kind of take ownership of their own education, right? But high schoolers Absolutely. can't start doing that if they're not used to doing that. So it's got to start in middle school, except that Middle schoolers can't really do that if they've been told all through elementary school that they're not in charge, they're, they're not uh, uh, in possession of their own education, if you will. So we have to start in elementary school, and, and if you're going to start it in elementary school, you've got to get the kids used to it in preschool, right? Definitely. So it's like that, that trickle-up theory, huh? Maybe. Yeah, yeah, it's a great, um, it's a big full circle but it creates a space where they just want to be every day and they can't wait to get there. And at the end of the day, they don't want to leave. <laughs> well, that's, that's always important. And that's, uh, you know, comforting for parents. You know, it can be <laughs> a little sad sometimes when, when a kid gets disappointed, when mom or dad shows up to pick them up. But, uh, <laughs> but that's a great indicator, right? That, uh, you know, yep. it's time to go home. No, I don't want to. Oh, that is awesome. So, Wendy, you talked a little bit about the, the evolution and, and the startup, and, and it's hard for me to believe. It seems like just yesterday, but that was five years ago. You've got a, a fifth anniversary coming up, right? We do. We're having a fifth birthday party. Oh. We're so excited. Well, a fifth birthday party. That's a big milestone. So, so what are you guys doing to celebrate? So we are having a community event uh, April 9th. We're having a birthday party where we'll have – um, bounces like bounce house, um, food truck, Kona ice, cupcakes, like the whole the whole nine yards. We're having everything. We're so excited. We're going to have activities, and the children can come play and paint. And yeah, we just can't wait. We can't wait to celebrate with the community and celebrate with our families. We're we're inviting our past families, um, and it's just going to be a a fun event. Well, that is fantastic. So it's not just for your current learners and families. A- a- any anybody in the community is uh, able to join you for Anyone, this celebration? Um, yeah, come, come play with us. So when and where is it? If you're putting out the invitation, when and where is it, Wendy? <laughs> so it's going to be at our Castaic location. Okay. Uh, hold on. Sorry, I was going to pull up the exact date and time. So it's April 9th, which is a Saturday. Mm-hmm. Tentatively right now, it's going to start around 2 o'clock, so that gives families time to kind of get in those soccer games and all of that good stuff Perfect. going on in the morning and then head on over to us. Perfect right opportunity after. for a late lunch or an early dinner at those food trucks? Yeah, the food truck is amazing. I, I taste tested it myself. Oh. <laughs> well, you got to do quality control. It's your job as a director. Right? That's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's going to be fun. We're going to have face painting and just so much fun. What a great opportunity if somebody's got, uh, you know, maybe just had a baby and is getting ready to go back to work because, like you said, you take as as young as six weeks or if somebody's looking towards uh, preschool for next year, um, they, they might want to um, go out and enjoy the fun, have a good time, let the kids have a snow cone at Kona Ice or, uh, like I said, have a late lunch, uh-huh. early dinner and bounce around and, and have a good time. And then I'm sure if a new family comes out to play with you, you'd 
but be willing to give them a little tour, walk them around the, the Tours campus. will absolutely be available. All right, fantastic. Wendy, I, we did mention that your, your program isn't just for littles, though. Um, I do want to talk about the program that you've got going on for older kids, but uh, you know what? Let's hold off until we come back from the break. Wendy Ruiz is the program director at Little Eye Leaders, the premier preschool in West Santa Clarita. But like I said, not just for littles. We'll find out more about what, uh, what they're doing and how they're working with older kids, too, when we get back. I'm Matt Watson, and this is SCVI and I Lead Schools Eye on the Valley. And you're listening to your hometown station, KHTS. Accidents happen. But rest assured, Patterson's Collision Center is here to help. Patterson's is a family-owned and operated collision repair facility providing the Santa Clarita Valley with premium collision repairs. Patterson's prides itself on being the only California-certified green repair shop in all of Santa Clarita. They are insurance claim specialists and even offer payment plans for your deductible. For personalized, friendly service, visit PattersonsCollisionCenter.com or call 294-1011 and let Patterson's Collision Center help ease your worries today. Moms, dads, this is Cardin Ellis, owner of Unipest. If your house has ants, spiders, or gophers, or you want a free orange oil termite inspection, you have to call Unipest Termite and Pest Control, Santa Clarita's only factory certified orange oil pest control company. We specialize in organic, low impact, and traditional pest control options that are all kid friendly, pet friendly, and affordable with no contracts, and we're SCV owned and operated. Call us at 661-BUG-7575 or visit unipest.com. Why did Mercedes-Benz of Valencia win the Dealer of Excellence Award in 2019? Because we strive to provide the most outstanding sales experience. Mercedes-Benz of Valencia COO Chris Paz. We know you have high expectations. Our stellar team will meet and exceed your expectations. That's why we were named Mercedes Best of the Best, placing us in the top 10% of all Mercedes dealers nationwide. Find out how you can lease a new Mercedes for unbelievably low monthly payments. Details at mbzvalencia.com. I'm Susan Owen, Managing Partner at Owen Patterson & Owen. I have 30 plus years in personal injury alone. There are so many attorneys who advertise, but we are different. If you are a client of Owen Patterson & Owen, I will be your attorney. We don't need to have other people handle our cases for us. If you've been injured, call Owen Patterson and Owen, 888-OPO-WINS. And we do, 888-OPO-WINS, or go to opolaw.com. Your hometown station. KHTS is the only station I listen to. 98.1 FM and AM 1220. Welcome back. You're listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 on the AM side. This is Matt Watson, and you're listening to SCVI, and I lead school's Eye on the Valley. This morning, I'm joined by Wendy Ruiz. Wendy is the program director at Little Eye Leaders Preschool in West Santa Clarita. West Santa Clarita, I mean, just off of Newhall Ranch Road. Freeway friendly. If you're not on the west side of town, it is certainly worth the drive, and it's just right off the freeway there off of Newhall Ranch Road. You know, like I said, it's, it's worth the drive, just like your kids. So, Wendy, we, uh, well, gosh, I, I dropped it probably two or three times last break, talking about how you're not just a preschool. You do start with the littlest of little six weeks, They've got the, 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 the cutest little babies in there, but you also go up to, to school age in your iCreate program. Can you tell us about iCreate and how you're working with some of the older kids? Sure. We do offer yeah, an after-school and before-school program. They, we take up till 12 years old, and our learners come uh, for our iCreate program. They come right after school, and we provide – we are a play-based uh, program for our school ages, just as we are with our little learners. Okay. So they come and we have experiences all all afternoon for them. Activities. They play outside. They play in the mud. They climb. They a little of everything: science and art and just all the fun. So play based <laughs> learning is isn't... also open, like when the on pupil free days or okay. the break, spring break, winter break, all of that. Gosh, you guys never stop working, right? You remind me of never Troy Palomalu. <laughs> never not working. 
Um, so, so play-based learning isn't just for, you know, two-year-olds, right? It's, it's important for our elementary age kids uh, to, to play and explore the world around them. Gosh, Wendy, I remember when I was in high school, my AP history teacher, when I was in 11th grade, had Legos in the back of the room. And we always uh, worked really hard to get our work done so that we would have a few, uh, a few minutes left to play with the, the Legos. And even adult learners in, enjoy playing. And it's important that we explore, continue to explore the world around us, right? It, it's plays important for, for kids of all ages, right? Yeah, it's important for their mental health, too. You know, they've been in school all day, so we like to provide a space for them to come after and just, you know, get their wiggles out and <laughs> just be with their friends and have fun. That's important. So before the break, you were telling us, you kind of gave us a little bit of a tour of your facility, how you had this many rooms for the infants and this many for the toddlers, and then you had three rooms for the, the school-age kids. I'm assuming that's the I Create program. So so those rooms are kind of empty during your typical school day, and then the kids show up after school? Yes. Okay, fantastic. We have some that come at 12, you know, 12.30 right after their kindergarten day, and then we have the rest that come over right after 3.15. Okay, and you mentioned you serve those kids during vacation times as well. I think you've got, uh, you know, we're, we're heading into summer. Things are starting to warm up a little bit out there. It's another gorgeous weekend here in Santa Clarita. So what have you got coming up for the, the big kids in the summer? What are you planning for I Create for the elementary age learners? Yeah, we've been doing lots and lots of planning. We cannot wait for summer camp because we get to do field trips again so and get out into that community so we are we just have so many plans going on we've got the whole calendar set up we are we will be doing field trips we'll have in in in-person field trips like in where they come to us and then we'll also be traveling on bus we're bringing in a like a bounce house uh obstacle course (laughs) we're bringing in um uh oh for in honor of 7-eleven day we're um bringing in uh Slushy Slurpees, machines. yeah, yeah, you gotta have yeah, that Slurpee we're on Seven Eleven. Machines, and uh, so we'll be making Slurpees. We're gonna be doing tie dye. We're gonna have dance offs. We're gonna make nice. music videos, and we just have so much planned for the summer. We just cannot wait. They're gonna go bowling, going to the beach, just lots and lots of fun stuff going on. Gosh, a fun, fun summer planned for for kids. Gosh. Like I said, you, you you still have the babies over the summer, right? Because because mom and dad yes, still have to work, and, but just tons <laughs> of fun for the older ones as well. Wendy, fun fact here: Do you know why Seven Eleven is called Seven Eleven? Oh, I heard it before, but I do not remember. That was their original hours. Originally, they were open from seven a.m. to eleven a.m. or to eleven p.m. And, I was going to eleven yeah. a.m. <laughs> and then a few years after that, yeah, they went twenty four hours, and but they still didn't take the locks off the door, which I was thought was weird. They're open 24 hours, but they've got locks on the doors. Okay, so, Wendy, let's let's talk uh, a little bit more about Little Eye Leaders. You, you opened Little Eye Leaders five years ago, uh, um, but talking about you and your family's experience before Little Eye Leaders came along, you and your boys, um, and, and by boys, I mean your husband, Robert, and, and, and your, your three amazing now uh, grown men, um, <laughs> You and your family have been an integral part of the iLead family for a lot longer than just the five years that Little I Leaders has been open, haven't you? you how Absolutely. long have you been a part of the iLead family? And can you tell us a little bit about your family's history with the greater iLead family? Yeah, we've been there pretty much since the beginning, since the discussion started. Right. Uh, yeah, we, we've been there. We've uh, started with all the conversations in, in coffee houses to to the opening of the doors, and um, it's been an amazing experience. I have um, my youngest son has been there since kindergarten, and now he's going into now he is in eleventh grade. Oh my So goodness. he's been there the whole time, and uh, just love that he's had that experience for his whole education. You know, so talk about learning that his education matters is he's it's been in his hands since kindergarten so that's been a really great experience and we're so grateful that Eileen has provided us those opportunities and provided a space for for learners of all types you know all 
all styles. Yeah. So, so, yeah, you... yeah, we've just been there for, we've just been there forever. We're, we're, it's just part of our family. You've been there since the inception. Like you said, your kids have kind of grown up with SCBI and, and, and the I lead schools. But uh, but don't sell yourself short, Wendy. You played a pretty pivotal role in the founding of, of the school. After after our founders' kids attended your preschool um, out there um, at COC, our our, fa- yeah. our founder Amber Golden became a little bit disillusioned with the district elementary schools and 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 sought to open up a school kind of similar based on her kids' experience in, in in the school that you were running at COC at the time, she wanted to open up something with a similar model. So what was it that, because um, you were there with all those conversations and helped guide her as, as she was opening up that school, what was it that she was so attracted to in your program and then built into SCVI and then later on the, the other I lead schools? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I was her daughter's uh, two-year-old. When her daughter was two, I was her daughter's teacher. And Amber and I became friends pretty quickly. She was a parent in our program, but she visited all the time. She hung out in our observation room daily. (laughs) And she just seemed to be taking it all in. And so we had many conversations about how do we take this passion for learning, this play-based philosophy, this project approach. And, And not just that, but she also really valued the connections and the relationships that we built not only with the children, but with the families. And she was wanted to find a way to take that concept and do it K through 12 because she felt that everyone needed that type of those strong relationships and those interactions and um, and that space to just be kids. Gosh, and it's so funny. That was almost two decades ago now, and, and it, it seems like the rest of education is kind of caught up to us, realizing, oh, yeah, building those strong relationships between a teacher and a student is is super important. You've got to be able to connect with the kids. You've got to be able to teach the whole kid, not just, okay, doesn't matter what's going on in your, your life outside the classroom. Sit down. Let's learn math now. Um, it, it's a full wraparound experience that uh, – that you've been delivering for a long time with your preschool programs that then we started incorporating in elementary, middle, high school. So it's it's so important for for everyone. Now, yes, Wendy, and I love that they also, it's also about the, not just the relationship with the teachers and the learners, but the teachers and the parents too. That they are a valuable part. They are part of the child's education and they were their first teacher and they are their first teacher. So it's super important that we can, can you know, that, that's something that Amber really connected with as well. And how do we include everyone, make it a whole family <laughs> connection, a whole family event? Yeah, definitely. Now, speaking of family, uh, we, we did talk a little bit already about uh, you and your kids and, and, and your amazing husband, Robert, who's, who's also a fantastic educator. You guys as a family have become somewhat of a... Uh, 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 escape room professionals haven't you 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 guys really love your escape rooms um and and you guys have gotten really good at them Uh, so talk to us about your experience with with escape rooms what makes for a great Mm. escape room we may have done a hundred escape rooms or so but a hundred (laughs) wow it is an addiction it definitely is a great escape room is one that you can do as a family that has multiple like levels of engagement, you know, where there's one puzzle creates some sort of opening to another puzzle and um, one to really encourage your, like, kind of like with Project Base, just encourages your, you to kind of think outside the box. And, mm-hmm. um, but what we love is, you know, it, it provides ways for us to communicate as a family, work together as a family. And ultimately in the end, we succeed as a family. So it's, uh, it is just something, yeah, we were definitely addicted to we try to do one every if we travel we do it where we travel so we you know every state or country or wherever we go we try to find an escape room uh and if we ever have a free night we're like oh where's your escape room (laughs) (laughs) that is awesome and what i love about it it's not like going to the movies no knock on the movies um but you're not just passively spending time together it's your whole family working together and then when you guys are done, because you always, you guys always solve. I think uh, I don't 
well, gosh, I guess if you failed it in an escape room, you, you don't post it on social media, do you? But <laughs> I always see you guys. Only a couple. <laughs> <laughs> I see your guys post all the time, and and I never see, you know, those family pictures where it looks like, gosh, mom and dad had a great time, and the kids are like, yeah, and we came along for the ride. No, all of you guys, from your oldest son who's well into his 20s now to, uh, you said Ramsey is a, a junior now in high school, all of you seem to have had just such an amazing time. It, it really is a lot of family fun, isn't it? Yeah, it's hard to find something that all of us can enjoy together or the, where the kids actually want to be with us. And <laughs> <laughs> that is definitely one of them. And then we always... At the end, if, when we get out, we get victory ice cream there, that we but, celebrate with. So. Incentivized. There you go. Well, it is. A, it, 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 get, <laughs> it can be a struggle, right? Finding stuff that uh, that the teenagers want to do with mom and dad. So yes. I'm glad you you guys have tapped into that. Uh, but <laughs> enough about you, Wendy. Tell us more, or, or, or let's tell us again about this five year uh, celebration you're having, the fifth birthday of Little Eye Leaders on the west side of Santa Clarita. Here, um, tell us uh, again about the the celebration you're having. What date? What time? Who can come? Yeah, so it's April 9th. It's a Saturday, uh, two o'clock is the planned uh, start time. We will have food truck. Well, food truck will have cone ice. We'll have birthday cake and face painting and uh, activities, painting activities and science. And uh, there might be some mud play going on, water play. <laughs> It'll be like a little, little bit of everything, as well as tours of our program. And yeah, we just can't wait. And uh, it's going to be at our Castaic site, so I can give you the address if that helps. Yeah, definitely. Address would be great. And also uh, website information so families can get more information uh, uh, there. Sure. So our address is 28040 Hasley Canyon Road. We're in, just like you said, right at the beginning of Castaic. Uh, we're in the shopping center with SCVI and Starbucks. Everyone knows it for Starbucks. Yeah. And uh, you can go on our website. It's littleileaders.org. And there's interest forms on there, as well as a video of our program and pictures and an all about me page, all about us page, sorry, and just lots of great information. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram if you want to see photos of our learners truly engaged in their play each day. And we're just so excited to be celebrating five years. We can't believe, like, we survived COVID, so <laughs> this is huge, and um we're still here. We're still picking. Well, not only did you guys survive COVID, that's a really good point, but you guys, because preschool was so essential for families to be able to get back to work, you guys actually provided the roadmap for SCVI and the rest of the ILEAD schools in in terms of how can we get our kids back on campus safely, didn't you? Yeah, we, we, we did not close. Close for about six weeks for the whole of COVID. Yeah. And uh, we knew that our families had to get back to work, and so we found a way to provide a safe space for them and we just kept on going and now we are yeah growing yeah. and growing more every day yeah definitely and, and you're so grateful for our families oh yes absolutely and i know they're grateful for you the families were so grateful to have a place that they could drop their kids off and and, and you know you had a lot of essential workers uh, that had to get back so um you mentioned your social media. That's a, a great way to kind of take a, a virtual tour of your programs and see what kids are actually doing. So I'm, I'm assuming I just go on uh, Facebook or Instagram and, and search for Little Eye Leaders, and I can see all your Little Eye Leaders there playing around and, and learning and growing. Yeah, you can search for Little Eye Leaders, and then I Create also has a page. I Create. So you can check both of them out and see some of our, it's, you know, some photographs, snapshots of their day, fun activities that they've been engaged in. Uh, it's just fun to kind of capture those moments and share them with others. Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. Well, gosh, Wendy, I want to thank you so much for joining me today. Um, we, we always love just, uh, gosh, I love any time I can get over there and play with your kids, but even talking about it really energizes me. So thanks so much. You, uh, you have a wonderful weekend and we'll talk to you real soon. Sounds good. Thank you for having me. Once again, littleileaders.org for more information on Little Eye Leaders Preschool. I create after school care, littleileaders.org. When we get back, well, 
you're going to meet these amazing young ladies that have been hanging around with me in the studio. Again, if you're on Facebook Live, you, you've you seen some, uh, some young ladies joining me, and they've been taking turns here in the studio. Well, in just a second, we're going to get them all in here. They'll introduce themselves to you. They'll, they'll let you know what they're doing here in the studio with me when we come back. I am Matt Watson, and you're listening to SCVI and I Lead School's Eye on the Valley on your hometown station, KHTS. Want to laugh at Wendy, TMJ that. and that obscenely overpriced bike guard? Discover the three most common mistakes that must change to stop TMJ for good. Hi, I'm Dr. Thomas Palucky, and WebMD chooses me as best chiropractor in functional medicine in Santa Clarita. Something to think about. So, when you're ready to get better, go to drpalucky.com. That's D R P O L U C K I.com to schedule your free consultation now. Experience Frontier Toyota's all-new hot and exciting Toyota lineup. Serving the Santa Clarita Valley for over 30 years. Frontier Toyota, the Camry, Corolla, and Prius Kings. They're tops in Tacoma and Tundra trucks. Frontier Toyota, the new way of car buying. Shop from home at FrontierToyota.com or visit their showroom at Valencia and Creekside. Discover a whole new car buying experience with your friends at Frontier Toyota. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, and I'm excited to announce my new product, My Slippers. They took me over two years to develop because I didn't want just an ordinary slipper. My Slippers are meant to be worn all day long, no matter what you're doing, whether you're inside or outside. My Slippers come with an exclusive three-tier cushioning system that you won't find in any other slipper. It combines two layers of foam, including my proprietary My Pillow foam and a patented impact gel made from U.S. soybeans. My three-tier cushioning system is going to help relieve pressure points, provide that micro support you need for all day comfort and help prevent fatigue. Not only that, my slippers are made with high quality leather and a premium indoor outdoor sole that make them extremely durable. I personally guarantee they're going to be the most comfortable slippers you'll ever own. Go to mypillow.com to receive 40% off the my slippers when you use the promo code KHTS or call 1 800 973 3927 and make sure to use the promo code KHTS. Dr. Neil Green has been treating Santa Clarita patients and making them smile for over 35 years. As a child, Dr. Green had a fear of the dentist and disliked even simple checkups. Today, he's sensitive to your needs. If you have anxiety about getting a checkup, he understands your apprehension even if you've avoided the dentist for years. Discover the comfort of visiting a dentist with Dr. Neil Green. Dentistry is his profession. People are his focus. Neil Green at DDS.com. That's Neil N-E-A-L Green DDS.com. Your hometown station, KHTS. Welcome back. You're listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 AM. I am Matt Watson, your host, and you're listening to SCVI and I Lead Schools, Eye on the Valley. And I understand um, we've got some folks listening in, tuning in. I'm not sure if they're on the radio or if they're on the Facebook live feed um, from I Lead Agua Dulce. So I Lead Agua Dulce, thanks for joining us. Um, that's the camera up there. So let's Let's wave at them. I've been talking a bit this morning about uh, these amazing young ladies that are joining me in the studio. If you've been on Facebook Live, you've seen them coming in and and out, and but they haven't been saying much. And so I wanted them wanted to give them a little bit of a chance to 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 talk and 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 gosh, explain to you the listeners what it is that they're they're doing here. First of all, watch this. I love doing this. I like being a teacher. Good morning, ladies. <laughs> there we go. So let's uh, let's start out. You guys can introduce yourselves, and then um, and, and then uh, we'll talk about what you're you're doing here. Why don't we start over here on my left? Good morning. What's your name? Penny. Hi, Penny. How are you? Nice and loud. Good. 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 Okay. And into the microphone. What's your name? Miley. Good morning, Miley. And how about you? Uh, I'm Renata. Renata. Peyton. Peyton. And Piper. And good morning, Piper. So Piper, Peyton, Renata, Miley, and Penny, welcome in one more time. And you might want to actually grab the microphone and pull it a little closer to you if, if that helps. Um, who wants who wants to talk first? Who wants to tell us what it is you guys are doing here? Why are you not at school this morning? 
Go ahead. Because we're learning a little bit about the station before we actually do our broadcast. Okay, so you're learning about the station before you do your broadcast. Who wants to explain broadcast? What, what, what broadcast are you doing? Um, we are doing a broadcast about natural hazards. Okay, so are you're studying natural hazards, dangerous things, um, problems that can come up like they do in our community sometimes? Yeah, and things to help, like, get rid of them and uh, what people can do. Okay, so you're going to share with the community what to do in case of an emergency. How about you? Into the microphone. What kind of emergencies are you guys going to be talking about when you guys do your broadcast? Um, we're going to be doing different natural hazards. Okay. And what date? Do you remember the date that you're going to be doing this? Um, April 1st. April 1st. So you guys are going to actually be back here in the studio with me on April 1st. And you guys are going to be doing a, a live broadcast. And so you're getting ready for that. Right? So you guys have been in here learning a little bit about the radio station and and just kind of getting warmed up for your broadcast on April 1st, right? Yep. So what do you guys think so far? Oh, uh, this looks very fun and interesting. Yeah? I like it. You like it? <laughs> have you guys enjoyed being in here today? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. So, so what's the best part? Missing your early morning class? Yes. yes. <laughs> That's funny. Of course. So I think your classmates are actually listening to us. Um, do you, do you want to say anything to your classmates that are actually in class doing what they're supposed to do this morning? Uh, hello. Hello. Hola. Hello. Hi, Maddie. <laughs> Hi, Val. Okay. And, and tell us about your, your teacher. Who's your teacher? Miss Brudy. Yeah? And, and is she, what kind of a teacher is she? She's a very fun she's teacher. Very, very good nice teacher. teacher. She's nice. She's good. Yeah. She's fun. Well, she put together this amazing project. Yeah. Now, is everyone in your class going to be broadcasting on the radio? No. no. Just it's us just group. us five, yeah. Just you five. What yeah. are the other kids doing? Um, mm. There's a flyer to the community. There is a... News. What? Survival News. kit. A survival kit, and then they're... And then one is like filming like a little news. news. Oh, so they're doing like a video yeah. shoot. Okay, so that's kind of cool. So you guys did like a full wraparound flyers. You're developing an emergency kit, a video broadcast, all kinds of information on darn it, how we can keep our, our community safe um, during all kinds of emergencies. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, a radio broadcast. How cool is that? Yeah. Very yeah. Very cool. <laughs> All I right. Love it. Well, ladies, I want to thank you for for joining me this morning. Um, I want to share with you, and I want to share with our listeners uh, a completely different story about um, some other students here in town, not just at our schools, although a couple of them do go to uh, one of our I lead schools. So, um, so yeah, check this out. This was this was really cool. Um, this was a couple of weeks ago. I shared on the radio. Um, here on our show during the What You Got Going This Weekend segment. Um, and, and Patty, if you remember, we, we shared on our last uh, live broadcast. I, I took a little break last Friday. Right, had, right. Had to do some training with some of our teachers. Um, but uh, I shared a story, a sports story with you in our community that I wanted to follow up on. Um, it was in high school hockey. Do any of you ladies play hockey? No. 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 Yeah, I'm really messing with you this morning, aren't I, Patty? <laughs> Uh, you are a Ooh. hockey fan. Okay. Okay, cool. Well, um, in high school hockey, the West Ranch hockey team had finished the, the regular season in third place. They did all right. Third yeah. place. Not bad. Yeah. Respectable. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, you know, they didn't finish in first. Bummer. But third place, it was enough to get them into the playoffs. West Ranch, um, actually, it's the West Ranch hockey team, and, and I'm sure my listeners are, are familiar with West Ranch High School. It, but it's not just players from Re West Ranch High School. It's kind of a tongue twister. Um, uh, that are on the team. West Ranch is actually composed of players from high schools across the valley, including, like I said, two players from SCVI. What? What? Anyways, um, so yeah, they've got they've got players from Hart and Canyon, Saugus, SCVI. They've got players from private schools, even as far north as as Bakersfield on their team, and of course West Ranch High School. And uh, so, yeah, the, the third place Wildcats varsity team, 
They faced off two weeks ago on Friday uh, against the sixth place Las Vegas Storm at the Cube. Um, and <laughs> they smoked them. They absolutely <laughs> smoked them. If you know hockey, 10 to 2, that's bad. Ooh, that's bad. That is bad. So, yeah, they, they first round of the playoffs did amazing. They won 10 to 2. And the Friday win propelled the West Ranch Wildcats. I'm going to try to stop doing that. Um, it propelled the Wildcats into the semifinals where they faced the second place Burbank Cougars at Pickwick Ice. Yeah, that's uh, Burbank Cougars' hometown ice, uh, Pickwick down there in Burbank la uh, two Saturdays ago. So, yeah, second round of the playoffs. That one wasn't quite a blowout. In fact, it was a nail-biter right down to the final buzzer. It found the Wildcats on top at the final buzzer, though, 6-5, to five, and on to the championship game at Crypto.com Arena. That's wow. right, formerly Staples wow. Center, now the Crypt, Crypto.com. So, yeah, it, it launched them into that final game, the championship game. You know, they actually won the championship last year. They were mm -hmm. hoping to repeat this year, finishing third place, put them really behind the eight ball, but here they are again in the championship game, right? Right there where the LA Kings play, where the Lakers play. And remember, third place in league. Now they're in the championship. The boys battled hard, but unfortunately, this time they came up short, losing to the Santa Barbara Royals 6-3. to three. It was an awesome season for West Ranch, and we are all so proud of them for, for what they accomplished. So, um... So, yeah, great job, Wildcats. Uh, and remember, not just West Ranch High School, but any high schooler who's interested in playing hockey, whether they're in a public school, charter school, private school, um, if your high schooler is interested in facing off on the ice, you can check out the team at westranchhockey.com. And remember, this is a team, again, for any high schooler in the area. They don't have to attend West Ranch. They just have to be in high school and love the puck. So, again, westranchhockey.com uh, for premier high school hockey in Santa Clarita. Now, um, we've got about a minute left. Uh, let's take a quick look at national holidays. Do you guys like to... Do you, do you guys like uh, to celebrate the the holidays? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know what today is? What? It's National Awkward Moments Day. <laughs> I feel like we're celebrating right now. What? This is kind of an awkward moment, isn't it? <laughs> yep. It, it's also National Sloppy Joe Day. You ever had a Sloppy Joe? <laughs> no. I have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there we go. You love you some so Sloppy Joes, huh? I need to make Nice, nice. Today is also National Supreme Sacrifice Day, not to not to bring it down, but uh, today's the day that we celebrate folks who have made that ultimate sacrifice for someone else, whether it's uh, the men and women in uniform who've laid down their very lives for us, uh, protecting their country and, and communities, or, or those folks that just go out of their way and, uh, and put their, themselves aside to make sure that the rest of us are okay. So National Supreme Sacrifice Day, National Awkward Moments Day, National Sloppy Joe Day. I feel like we need to get to a break, ladies. I tell you what, when we get back, you won't want to miss this. The city of Santa Clarita has always made a strong commitment to bringing you the best in community events and artistic enjoyment. Phil Lantis, the city's arts and events administrator, is going to be joining us. And later on in the hour, Big T's Five Minutes of Fame. I am Matt Watson. You are listening to SCVI and I Lead School's Eye on the Valley on your hometown station, KHTS. The shows must go on. The Main in Santa Clarita is your destination for free online music, theater, art, and entertainment opportunities. Tune into fun variety nights, join a talent show, learn from filmmaking experts, attend a modern play, and more from the comfort of your home. For more information and to view upcoming events, go to facebook.com slash themainnewhall or at themain.org. Enjoy the shows. Welcome to Dunkin', where you can always try something new, like the brown sugar oat iced latte, made with oat milk. If you're hungry, try the new omelet bites, bacon and cheddar, or egg white and veggies. Use the Dunkin' app, earn points, and get rewards. Dunkin' has two locations in the SCV, Bouquet Canyon with curbside pickup and delivery, or try the Canyon Country drive through Santa Clarita runs on Dunkin'. 
A Royal Suite Home Furnishings has been family owned and operated in Santa Clarita since 1978. They keep America working by stocking heritage quality furniture made right here in the USA. With high-end design and thousands of fabrics to choose from, a Royal Suite offers a wide selection of furniture at incredibly low prices. Pay 0% interest with your approved credit for 12, 24, 36, or 48 months. See store for details. Visit a Royal Suite massive showroom on Carl Boyer Drive near Sam's Club in Santa Clarita. A Royal Suite. Sweet dreams. I'm Susan Owen, Managing Partner at Owen Patterson & Owen. I have 30 plus years in personal injury alone. There are so many attorneys who advertise, but we are different. If you are a client of Owen Patterson & Owen, I will be your attorney. We don't need to have other people handle our cases for us. If you've been injured, call Owen Patterson & Owen, 888-OPO-WINS. And we do, 888-OPO-WINS, or go to opolaw.com. KHTS AM 1220 and 98.1 FM Santa Clarita. It's 9 o'clock. Time for national news on KHTS. Urging China against helping Russia. I'm Rich Denison, Fox News. President Biden held a video call with Chinese President Xi Jinping this morning in an effort to keep Beijing from providing aid to Russia for its invasion of Ukraine. Fox's Jared Halpern's live from the White House. Now, President Biden spoke for nearly two hours over that video call with his Chinese counterpart. That conversation planned as U.S. officials worry China could provide military assistance to Russia's invasion of Ukraine. This week, administration officials warned Chinese assistance to Russia would be met with severe consequences and cost. China's foreign ministry says she made clear the conflict in Ukraine is in no one's interest. U.S. officials say Beijing should condemn the Russian invasion. Rich. Jared, Russian President Vladimir Putin appeared at a huge flag-waving rally in Moscow, praising his country's troops today as they press their attacks on Ukrainian cities. The rally in concert marking eight years since Russia's annexation of the Crimean Peninsula seized from Ukraine. A jury in Grand Rapids, Michigan, scheduled to hear today from an informant who tipped off the FBI about an alleged plot to kidnap Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer in 2020 over her COVID lockdowns and business closures. A tip that ultimately led to charges for Adam Fox, Barry Croft, Daniel Harris, and Brandon Caserta, who maintain that they were set up. Two others have pled guilty and also expected to testify. Another eight men face state charges in the case. Fox's Jeff Manasso. Moderna asked the Food and Drug Administration to authorize a fourth shot of its COVID-19 vaccine as a booster for all adults. The request is broader than rival pharmaceutical company Pfizer's request this week for the regulator to approve a booster for adults 65 and older. The U.S. officials have been discussing additional boosters to shore up the vaccine's protection against serious disease and death from COVID. America's listening to Fox News. At Lowe's, every pro is an MVP to us. No matter how big or small your business is, earn back when you spend, get exclusive offers and paint rewards. It all adds up to help level up your business. Join Lowe's MVP's Pro Rewards and Partnership Program today. Minimum purchase required. Earnings and paint rewards awarded as Lowe's e-gift cards. Exclusions, restrictions, and more terms apply. Filed through 1231-22. See Lowe's.com slash L slash Pro Loyalty Terms. Subject to change. U.S. only. Biden's massive spending plan has expanded America's money supply and taken money out of your pocket. But you can fight back against runaway inflation by sheltering your IRA or 401k with gold through Birch Gold Group. This is Stephen K. Bannon, and I'm proud to be a customer of Birch Gold. Join me. Birch Gold has created a free info kit on protecting your retirement with gold in a tax-sheltered account. Just text the words SHELTER to 989898. Text SHELTER to 989898 and learn how to shelter your IRA or 401k with gold. There's been some relief from rising gas prices, but that may be short-lived. Nationwide, on average, gas prices are down a few cents from last week's record high, but that relief may only be temporary, and things could still get worse. The International Energy Agency is warning the global oil market could face its biggest supply crisis in decades if OPEC doesn't increase its output. Fox's Garrett Tenney. President Biden's been calling on gas companies to start cutting prices now that the cost of a barrel of crude is falling off. He said on Twitter, oil and gas companies shouldn't pad their profits at the expense of hardworking Americans. Low humidity and gusty winds fueled multiple wildfires today in West Texas, burning homes and other structures and prompting evacuations of small communities. 
Several wildfires merged to form what fire officials call a complex that was burning near Eastland and about 120 miles west of Dallas. The first round of the NCAA men's basketball tournament wraps up today. Today's slate of men's college hoops action opens with the return of Sister Jean as Loyola Chicago squares off against Ohio State in the first of 16 games to close out the round of 64. Just one number one seed in action today. That's Arizona going up against first four winner Wright State. Notre Dame coming out of the first four as well. The 11 seed Fighting Irish will be taking on six seed Alabama this afternoon. But the marquee matchup today may well be a 215 battle with Duke going up against Cal State Fullerton as Blue Devils head men's basketball coach Mike Shish Shevsky begins his final NCAA tournament of his career. Matt Napolitano, Fox News. Film icon Arnold Schwarzenegger told Russians in a video posted on social media they're being lied to about the war in Ukraine and accused President Vladimir Putin of sacrificing Russian soldiers' lives for his own ambitions. Schwarzenegger is hugely popular in Russia and apparently also with Putin. The president of Russia Twitter account follows only 22 accounts. One of them is the actor's. I'm Rich Dennison, and this is Fox News. I'm Stuart Varney, and this is the Fox Business Report. Investors are snapping up shares of Moderna today, which is seeking FDA approval for a second booster shot of its COVID-19 vaccine for adults 18 and older. Lauren Simonetti with the Fox Business Network clarifies. A fourth COVID shot is this booster number two. Pfizer says... Please give us approval for senior citizens, those 65 and up. Moderna says, let's just make it simpler. Please give us approval for all adults. And they say that gives flexibility to doctors and the CDC. And for ice cream lovers, Ben & Jerry's brings back Dublin Mudslide from its flavor graveyard. This time, though, the ice cream flavor will include a new spirit made from whey, the byproduct created while making cheese. That's your Fox Business Report. I'm Lillian Wu, invested in you. Any supplier can drop a box outside your door, but if you want a partner who delivers great customer service too, rely on Cintas. Your dedicated service reps can deliver what you need to help your business run smoothly. From essential cleaning products to hygienically cleaned apparel, fire protection services to first aid and safety supplies. That service you can't get from a box. Oh, I'm ready! Visit Cintas.com and get ready for the work day. Thanks for listening to KHTS AM 1220. Canyon Country, California. K260 CO 98.1 FM, Santa Clarita, California. SCVI is a tuition-free TK-12 through charter school that gives your child boundless opportunities to think critically and imagine freely. We offer a customized learning program built around your child's unique interests and strengths with the only international baccalaureate program in all of Santa Clarita. Our approach keeps students and families in step no matter where your learning is taking place. Be empowered to make your mark on the world at SCVI. To take a tour or enroll now in our one-of-a-kind program, visit iLeadSantaClarita.org. iLead Schools, free to think, inspired to lead. With the safe disposal of waste from our homes in the Santa Clarita Valley, Chiquita Canyon Landfill is able to create enough green energy to power 10,000 homes each year. So you can feel good that the waste from your home in the SCV is helping create a clean energy source and reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Chiquita Canyon Landfill is our partner in sustainable living. Chiquita Canyon is helping lead the way to a greener future. Chiquita Canyon Landfill, our partner in sustainable living. Why did Mercedes-Benz of Valencia win the Dealer of Excellence Award in 2019? Because we strive to provide the most outstanding sales experience. Mercedes-Benz of Valencia COO Chris Paz. We know you have high expectations. Our stellar team will meet and exceed your expectations. That's why we were named Mercedes Best of the Best, placing us in the top 10% of all Mercedes dealers nationwide. Find out how you can lease a new Mercedes for unbelievably low monthly payments. Details at mbzvalencia.com. A Royal, Suite. a Royal Suite Home Furnishings has been family owned and operated in Santa Clarita since 1978. They keep America working by stocking heritage quality furniture made right here in the USA. With high-end design and thousands of fabrics to choose from, a Royal Suite offers a wide selection of furniture at incredibly low prices. Pay 0% interest with your approved credit for 12, 24, 36, or 48 months. See store for details. Visit a Royal Suite's massive showroom on Carl Boyer Drive near Sam's Club in Santa Clarita. A 
The following is sponsored programming and does not necessarily reflect the views or opinions of KHTS or its ownership. Welcome back. You are listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 AM. I am Matt Watson, your host, and you're listening to SCBI and I Lead Schools Eye on the Valley. Lots of action here in the studio today. want to thank again uh, uh, our, well, I don't know if they were our guests, our, my, my, my protege, our visitors from I Lead Agua Dulce, five amazing young ladies who are preparing their own radio broadcast for April 1st, and they just headed back to class. And, and now we've got my next guest right here in the studio. So all kinds of stuff going on. We are coming to you live from the KHTS studios here at the center of Main Street in beautiful downtown Newhall. My next guest, as I said, is the Arts and Events Administrator for the city of Santa Clarita. Phil Antis grew up on a farm in the Pacific Northwest before attending film school in New York. He began working for Santa Clarita in the early 90s, and throughout the decade, he, he served in a number of positions, all in the area of the arts and events. He left us for a little while in 99, but uh, he returned in 2001 as the cultural affairs supervisor and was later promoted to the arts and events administrator in 2003. Today, pretty much everything that has anything to do with the visual arts, the performing arts, or any kind of special event here in our city goes through Phil's office. Phil, welcome back to Eye on the Valley. Thank you so much. I'm honored to be here. So glad to have you. So, um, so Phil, I mentioned your upbringing in the Pacific Northwest, beautiful area of the country, and then you went to school in, in New York, as a, as a young man does. Everybody should get out to New York and go to school and, and just learn a little bit about the culture there. But uh, how did you ever find us here in Awesome Town? How did you come to work at the city of Santa Clarita? So my wife is a professional actress, and when we uh, when we got out of school, first we moved to Orlando for a couple of years, but then we made our way to L.A. Because Orlando in July, right? Yeah, well, and <laughs> bugs. Yeah. Oh. They don't tell you about the bugs, but the, the little right. no see bugs all oh, over the place in boy. the summer. And yeah. I, I rode my bike to work, and I would run into these swarms of no see and I'm like, I'm done. I'm ready to go. <laughs> so, uh, And the goal was actually always to get to L.A., if, you know, to be a professional actress. Absolutely, you can do that elsewhere, but it's, it's really the right place to be. Right. So when we moved to L.A. in 1993, my wife Nancy and I, uh, I had a friend, Sean Morgan, who had gone to CalArts, and while he was going to CalArts, he had actually got a part-time job at the city. Mm -hmm. And when I moved here, he was like, hey, you should come work events on the weekends. So I became what we now call a weekend warrior. We didn't call it that <laughs> then, but and and worked events you know, on weekends while uh, managing a bookstore down in uh, Burbank. And after about a year, I uh, got promoted to a 30-hour-a-week office part-time person and a couple years later, a full-time events person. And it's it's a career that I didn't know existed and I didn't know San Creta existed to be honest when I moved here in 93 but I qu quickly found out and honestly it's been a, an amazing journey and I, I've, I've loved my career and I've loved working for uh, this community and for a great city organization so yeah you hit the nail on the head um, myself I've been here about 40 years and it's, it's a great community and, and, and an amazing city to to work for. I've got many, many friends that work for the city and just, just absolutely love it. So, so tell us what your, your role as arts and events. Um, so I, I do a little bit of cyber stalking on, on my guests. <laughs> and so I was, I was looking around, I found three different titles for you. Is it Manager, director, administrator. Uh, I, I'm technically manager now. Okay. So I, uh, about five, six years ago, got promoted from the arts and events administrator to the arts and events manager. So, okay. So, so yeah. Thank you for the all correction. All good. The titles don't matter. It's doing the same stuff, which is, as you described very uh, correctly, it's really anything arts related um, as well as anything events related. I also uh, oversee the volunteer program, which is a wonderful program that we have hundreds, literally thousands, actually, of people. People volunteer every year for various programs and events and stuff, which is great. I oversee the school programs team, um, which does the drug-free youth in uh, San Creta Valley or Defiant SCV program, mm -hmm. as well as arts education stuff. 
and just recently I took over the um, uh, facilities reservations team, which uh-huh. are so all the sports that are utilizing parks or if you have an event or a picnic at a park, that, that team is. And it's great to have them. I've known them forever working around so long, but we just did a little mini reorgan. I, I was uh, in September, took on that function. So, um, but really my... My love is the arts, mm-hmm. but uh, really what I've been doing the longest here is the event side of things. And and if you know Santa Creta, you know we have a wonderful events, not just produced by the city, but uh, our local nonprofits and by some for-profit folks. I know KHTS has their upcoming Home and Garden Show, which yeah. is a huge event every year. And it's so great that we're able to come out of the last couple of years of, of, you know, hit or miss on being able to do most events right. and are able to start ramping up again. So, for example, just last night right here in Old Town New Hall, we had our first census event of the year. It was uh, Shamrockin' was the theme. Shamrockin'. <laughs> because of St. Patty's Day. And yeah. honestly, I, it was so crowded and, and people were so, seemed so happy to be out and able to do stuff. So we're, we're excited to be back to doing events. And, and that's a monthly event that happens uh, for eight months starting last night. And it's the third Thursday of the month. And we have a different theme every month. And it's it's great that we're back. Wild West coming in on April 21st. Um, and uh, uh, uh Nintendo Party. I have trouble saying that word Nintendo. Nintendo Party on May 19th are the themes coming up. So Wow. Gosh, there's all kinds of things going on. I was kind of trying to keep count as you were talking about everything that, that you do as uh, arts and events manager. You've got like four full-time jobs, it seems. <laughs> Well, luckily, I have a great, great team. Okay. Um, they're amazing folks. Many of them have worked for me uh, or with me for for years, and, and just a, a great staff. I mean, that that's really what makes the city of Santa Clarita, uh so so wonderful is the, the mm-hmm. folks I get to work with. So, um, yeah, it's it's amazing that, that the team is able to do so much and, and make such an impact. And being in the business we're in, we get that feedback right away, like, you know, People are very grateful for the stuff we do. I feel for some of my uh, coworkers who are in areas that maybe are more about like you know telling people when they maybe aren't doing so well or traffic or some of those okay. areas where there's a lot of complaints. Mm-hmm. We get a lot of the uh, thank you for doing this stuff. So ah. I, you know, I, I'm such a wimp. I'm so grateful that I'm not in the uh, don't get criticized or yelled at too often. So. <laughs> well, we'll get you on the school board so you yeah, can get some of go. that. <laughs> Um, gosh, yeah, and, and it's it's interesting. Uh, I, you know, folks love living in this community because of everything that's available, but we don't always stop to kind of contemplate everything that's going on all at the same time. We, you know, I just might know that, oh, yeah, I, I've got a softball game that I've got this Sunday night or – Oh yeah, let's let's head out there. They're doing this shamrocking thing on the on the streets in downtown Newhall. But but you don't think about any given weekend here in Santa Clarita. You guys are probably uh, either directly putting on or have a hand in coordinating five, six, ten events in a weekend and and things throughout. Every single day, every night with all the sports and, and, and my five-year-old's birthday party out at the, the city park and stuff like that. You guys have a hand in just about everything, and that's a lot here in Santa Clarita. Absolutely. I mean, even just this weekend, uh, so we had uh, the census last night on Saturday, tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have our Youth Art Showcase, our annual event that celebrates kids' creativity. We'll talk about that in yeah. a little bit, yeah. Um, but on top of that, uh, we have uh, you know events happening at the new Canyon Country Community Center. We have events happening at the various parks. There's a Ukrainian uh, fundraiser event happening mm-hmm. at Bridgeport Park. There's always sports and events happening at Central Park. Sure. So you're exactly right. There's so much going on and it's it's really great. I mean, that's that's a testament to the community, right? right. It's, uh, we help make those things happen, but it really is because the community is so engaged and, yeah. and they yeah. care so much about being uh, neighbors to each other mm-hmm. and supporting each other. And yeah, like I mentioned earlier, we have such amazing nonprofits out here who are doing such amazing, amazing events. So it really is a, a that's what makes Santa Creed special in my mind. Yeah. The, the, I always say we're the biggest small town 
in the the country. I grew up in a very small town, mm-hmm. Dallas, Oregon. Not the Dells, Dallas, even smaller. Um, and uh, really, Santa Cruz has the same vibe as the the community I grew up in. We we care for each other, and a lot of big cities, and we're a big city now. Yeah, don't they lose that vibe? They lose that that connection, and once that's lost, it's hard to rebuild. Yep. So I'm really excited. Like I say, that we're coming out of the, the dark times, if you will, and that we're able to reconnect and bring people together. Last summer, we were able to do concerts. And, yeah. and to me, that is the ultimate event that we produce that demonstrates that com- neighborhood connection. And it was so great to be out there and, and see people enjoying themselves and listening to music. And just, you know, it was back to what, what we do best. It, it really did inject life into the community that was just just gasping for air socially. Um, and, and so that was... That was huge for our community, and you mentioned that that darkness, right? It really was a a, a tough couple of years uh, through that pandemic, especially for events. You know, I, I'm uh, I get criticized a lot. I'm on social media a lot, um, and you know, folks were were really gripping. You know, they took away our concerts. They uh, no Fourth of July parade, and 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 all these different things. So uh, that had to have been really tough trying to figure out, you know, events being canceled that have been planned for months in advance, years in advance, um, trying to figure out how to plan alternative events, you know, okay, not, we can't do the, the parade, but how can we do a parade without doing a parade? And, and then, you know, people getting antsy and probably pressing your office of, you know, what's going on? Are we going to do <laughs> concerts? Are you going to take our concerts from us? Uh, um, and things like that. So what was that like as, as you were, Trying to keep folks safe, obviously, and distanced, um, but at the same time knowing how important that is to our community. Well, I can I t- tell you that the city leadership, and I'll give big props to city manager Ken Striplin. Yep. From the very beginning of the pandemic, we were being asked, what can we do? So it was never about, hey, let's not focus on the can't do's. Let's figure out ways to to do things, to find things to do. And so in my area specifically, um, you know, we, we operate the 81 seat theater, the main within a month, some of the programming that would normally be in the theater was done virtually yeah. as well as a new whole new thing, uh, uh was developed called SOS stage on screen mm-hmm. where basically theater groups did, uh, zoom plays for yeah. want of a better term. Mm-hmm. And I know that a lot of folks did that, but we were one of the first to very quickly do that because that's what our business is, is right. providing plays. Um, and in the events side, uh, whatever we could move to virtual and creating new events, we created a, a city cinemas, basically a drive-in, because that was one of the things that was allowed, because you would show up in your car, and we used one of our open spaces for that. So it really was all about, okay, we can't do this, what can we do? How can we make this work, or what can we come up with that's new? I will say, it was really hard, particularly for the events team, um, because they're wired to be out there and moving canopies and sure. and then seeing the the results of their efforts right then yeah. you know uh, i i think that team struggled the most in terms of of kind of having the challenge of being frustrated with the the limitations but but everyone was a trooper and like i say the the leadership of the city and 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 the city council everyone kind of like let's focus and and when you look back and i look at what my my compadres in other cities did mm-hmm. or are still doing, honestly, we're light years ahead of them. So, I mean, there's still yeah. folks that aren't even in the office yet. And and we've been in the office for almost a year now. And we've been, you know, as quick as we can bringing events back. There's still a few things that we had to cancel this year that were mm-hmm. heartbreaking. Um, and honestly, they were they were very odd reasons. And that's the, str- that's the sad part is like, oh, it's not as simple as, oh, no one's doing events. It was particulars to those events and but we're excited that we're coming back and we're even introducing some new stuff and coming nice. up in the next few months so nice. you know that that ability to pivot and adjust to things uh, really gets me uh fired up to see um whether it's our city or, or individuals shifting as as need dictates you know because our, our world is constantly evolving and so fast whether it's technology based or because all of a sudden there's this virus that just killed everything um you know one of the things in the midst of the pandemic that really got my juices going uh, there were so many businesses out there saying oh covid we can't shut down a- and, and my notion was no let's not say exactly what you said to our city manager not 
can we? But how can we still move forward? You know, we had somebody in, in the, the deepest, darkest of the pandemic who, as a profession, he's a, a DJ, right? So he does weddings and bar mitzvahs and birthday parties. Well, that is something that you kind of just throw up your hands and say, I can't. Nope. He threw his speakers in the back of his Jeep and he was now the driveway DJ putting on parties for communities. And I thought, what an amazing pivot. You and your teams have done the same. You mentioned, you know, the main, it's a, a live theater. Well, you know, we saw in Broadway, all, everybody saying, well, we just can't. And here you guys are saying, not only can we, but you expanded your audience because of, of the, the, the virtual things that they were doing on the main. And I say were, they're still doing some of those virtual things because they, they discovered that, uh, uh, the, well, the pandemic showed them that they can do more. Um, and, and so they continue to do so. We've got uh, Phil Lantis joining us here in the studio. You guys have got so much going on here in the city. In fact, there's a, a few of my favorite events coming up soon. You mentioned them a little bit. I want to go into a little bit of depth when we get back. Let's take a quick break, and we'll talk about those events kind of one by one. I'm Matt Watson. You're listening to SCVI and I Lead Schools Eye on the Valley on your hometown station, KHTS. <music> With locations throughout the valley, Providence offers the most advanced technology and therapies for treating cancer in Southern California. Call 1-888-HEALING for your annual checkup or second opinion. The road to healing leads to Providence. No contract pest control. Did you hear that? Yes, Unipest has no contract, low impact, affordable and environmentally and family friendly pest control options with orange oil or other family friendly products. Whether it's ants, spiders, gophers, termites or bed bugs, Unipest Termite and Pest Control has an effective, eco-friendly option for you. Call Unipest today for a free orange oil inspection at 661-BUG-7575 or visit unipest.com. <laughs> Experience Frontier Toyota's all-new hot and exciting Toyota lineup. Serving the Santa Clarita Valley for over 30 years. Frontier Toyota, the Camry, Corolla, and Prius Kings. Their tops in Tacoma and Tundra trucks. Frontier Toyota, the new way of car buying. Shop from home at FrontierToyota.com or visit their showroom at Valencia and Creekside. Discover a whole new car buying experience with your friends at Frontier Toyota. Helping lead the way to a greener future, all of Burtec's Santa Clarita Valley waste collection trucks run on clean, burning natural gas. Burtec takes pride in their community, and they've been serving the SCV for nearly two decades. Because at Burtec, we'll take care of it. Your hometown station. KHTS is the only station I listen to. 98.1 FM and AM 1220. Welcome back. You're listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 AM. This is SCVI and I lead schools Eye on the Valley. I am your host, Matt Watson, and this morning I am joined by the City of Santa Clarita's Arts and Events Manager, Phil Lantis. Phil, we were talking before the break about, gosh, just so much you've got going on. I don't know how you even have time to come in here for a few minutes and, and, and play with us here in the studio. Um, but let's talk about some of those events that are that are coming up. Um, we've actually already launched um, One Story, One City. That's happening now. Can you, can you tell us a little bit about what uh, One Story, One City is? Absolutely. So it's an annual program that our, our uh, Santa Cruz Libraries does do. Let me use the proper English since we're talking about reading. Um, and uh, they choose a book that everyone can read together. And then there's a bunch of different activities throughout the month of March. So okay. they already, uh, the book this year is called The Nature Fix by Florence Williams. And the subtitle really tells what it's about. Why Nature Makes Us Happier, Healthier, and More Creative. Mm. And it's a very, it's a totally appropriate selection for where we're at right now. And it's all about how nature can, can feed us and, and inspire us and re-energize us and it's a really wonderful book a very positive book and as you know San Creta highly values um, nature in our open space absolutely. it's that absolutely one of our high priorities as a community so uh, there have been a bunch of events that have already happened including a, a Zoom interview with the author mm -hmm. um, but actually tonight uh, will be an event called the Full Moon Hike which will be at our Golden Valley Ranch open space at 630 
Um, and then there's a couple of the other events next week. There's a healthy eating class on the 23rd at 4 at New Hall Library. And there's a few other things. And if people are interested in that, if you go to SantaClaritaLibrary.com slash one story, one city, I know it's a lot, but uh, <laughs> that, then you can get more information on that. And uh, the, our libraries are such a valuable resource and, oh, yeah. and they're, they're um, really wonderful people who love putting on events and programs mm -hmm. and stuff. So, uh, so we partner with them quite a bit on, on various different activities. So I'm happy to, to promote their event. It's really their stuff, mm -hmm. but you know, we help them out a little bit. So. Well, and that is really cool. It, it's uh, like this massive book club that anyone in the community can participate in. Not like that, that snooty exclusive <laughs> book club, finer things on, on the office that, you know, Pam and Oscar <laughs> and Toby started and wouldn't let anybody else in. Anybody in the community can join this book club and it's not just a book club. There's activities and gosh, Full moon hike tonight to get out, and, and I've noticed just moving around town, spring is really busted out all over, and and, and so it, it's a yeah. great time to get out to, into our open spaces and, and and enjoy nature. That's really cool. That is that is really really cool. Um, you mentioned the the youth art showcase. This is one of my favorites because I, I'm I'm part of a group that has quite a hand in this. I'm a, I'm a board member on the the Sister Cities oh, SCV, SCVIP uh, group, and and we put on this uh, this event. Can you talk to us a little bit about the Youth Art Showcase? Absolutely, and you just nailed it. It's really a giant partnership mm -hmm. that the city kind of hosts and helps coordinate, facilitate. Um, but really, it's to celebrate youth's creativity through visual and performance arts right and some of our partners one of our primary is the sister cities program because there's an art contest that sister cities does actually it's an art essay photography i forget all the categories i'm missing one in there um but yeah, there's music as oh, well music yeah. thank you um and and there's a theme every year and and so it's a way to showcase what have what's been uh submitted for that contest mm -hmm. which is really wonderful the sister city program is great um we also have our schools participate um this year's a little different because some of the challenges Challenges with still res COVID residue, still if you want. Yeah, yeah. COVID residue, I like <laughs> yeah. it. Um, so, uh, but it is a, a wonderful event. We weren't able to do it the last couple years, so we're so excited to be back with it. And it is tomorrow, Saturday, from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the center, which is at the San Crita Sports Complex. Mm -hmm. If you know the Aquatic Center, you just go up the hill and you'll be at the center. And it, it's a, a, a Great coming together to celebrate creativity, which especially youth creativity, which is such an important thing to do. Yeah, yeah. You just punch it in your phone on Waze or, or whatever, and it's the center spelled the the uppity British way. Yeah, for some reason we're yeah <laughs> R E instead of that E R. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then you mentioned the return of census. We had a big old bash down here in, in New Hall last night for, for St. Patrick's Day. But what is what is census? It's a series of things, isn't it? Yeah, it's. Uh, we've been doing it now. I think this is 10 years. This may be 10 years. Wow. Mm -hmm. I hadn't thought about that. I'll have to double check. But uh, yeah, it's called census because the whole idea is you're going to be able to taste things and hear things and see things and participate in things. So it's, it's food, it's bands, it's drinks, it's activities. It's it's a party. It's a giant party on yeah. a theme, you know. Anyone who's ever gone to a theme party, we're doing that on a block here in Main Street. Um, and it, it's just a lot of fun. And it's a, it's a Thursday night, um, and that's mm -hmm. kind of intentional. First of all, we don't want to conflict too much with, like, the restaurants and businesses on the weekend. Sure. But also, it's one of our few events that, it, while, of course, families are welcome, it's not geared to families. It's geared to... Uh, the, the bigger kids. The, the bigger yeah, kids, the yeah, kids exactly. Like me, yeah. And so we put it on a Thursday night to kind of encourage to, you know, and, and honestly, almost all of our events are intended for families, but this is one that's that's not necessarily intended for families. Like I say, we're not going to kick kids out, and they can still come and have a good time, mm -hmm. but it really isn't the, the uh, target audience with it. And so it, it's more of a glass of wine, uh, it, a beer yep, kind of yep, thing, yep. not so much a paint your face kind of thing. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, and, and uh, you know, we do have activities, and some of those activities are can be used, you know, can attract kids, but it's also fun activities for adults. So sure, yeah. it, it really is a, a great event that's really become kind of the signature event for the city in New Hall. So, yeah, yeah. And, and a different theme each, yep. each yep. Thursday and, yep. and yep. lots of fun going on. So, uh, yeah, even Thursday night is a great time to, to be down here on Main Street. Yeah. Um, and then we've got uh, the Canyon Country Community Center uh, celebrations of cultures and customs around the world beginning 
April 1st. Tell me so what So this is. is one of our new events. Yeah. And it's actually a new event series. And it's in a new building. And it's in a new building, a gorgeous building. Oh, and beautiful. Yeah, so on April 1st, it'll be the first Friday of every month, we will be celebrating a different culture. Okay. So we're kicking it off on April 1st with Polynesia. Nice. Um, so we'll have the dancers and the food and the, and, act, yeah. and art and crafts and, um, and activities. And this absolutely is a kid-based event or okay. family-based event. Fantastic. You don't have to have kids to come, but it's definitely welcome for that. And it runs from 6 to 9 p.m. at the Canyon Country Community Center. And it really is intended to be our signature event there. So that's uh, um, uh, April's. Uh, Mays is going to be uh, Sister Cities. There you go. So that's celebrating our two official sister cities in Ecuador and the Philippines, as well as two cities that uh, were in negotiations with we're like sisters yeah, we're, we're, we're friends family. right yeah, yeah, yeah we're friends and that's japan and china so right. um it'll represent all of those groups we're really excited about that one it also will hopefully get the word out about the fact that we have a wonderful sister cities program yeah. here locally and then in june we're doing india which i'm excited about july greece uh august the Caribbean and um, September, Mexico. So that's nice. our first season, and and like I say, it's it's going to be a party still, mm-hmm. absolutely family friendly party. But uh, food, uh, drink, uh, activities, art, crafts, and entertainment can't go wrong with any of that, right? You, you mentioned <laughs> that we are the biggest little town in in the world, and in fact, I think we're the third largest city in Los Angeles County. The world really does live here in Santa Clarita, and I love that the. That the city's celebrating that and, and giving families a structured opportunity to get their kids involved in all these multicultural events. Absolutely. That's that is, what, exactly what it's about, is celebrating that, that we're a uh, community made up of many different backgrounds. Mm-hmm. And, and, and and just uh, what a great thing to celebrate. And yeah. how better to do it than through culture and entertainment. Absolutely. And, and what I love most about culture is food is the central part of it. So, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Can't go wrong with that. Right. <laughs> now, and then on April 20th, 23rd, gosh, spring is really when our, our, our city comes out to, to play. We're, we're a year-round city living here in beautiful, beautiful SoCal, but but spring, we've got a lot going on. April 23rd at the center, um, you've got Party on the Point. Love me a good party. What's Party on the Point? So this is a very interesting one. So uh, we wanted, the city wanted to do something to celebrate kind of like, hey, it's been a tough couple years. Why don't we just throw a giant party and throw kind of like everything at it? Right. Just make it a thing where so it's at the sports complex. We're going to have bands going on the uh, stage by the skate park. We're going to have the aquatic center open a couple with like an obstacle course through one of the pools. And of course, the kids area will be Uh open. We're going to have roller skating in the center. It's going to be made up like, you know, with a disco ball. And yeah, yeah, you can rent skates and do the thing. All skate backwards. Um, Yeah. yeah. (laughs) We're going to at the track uh, bike park we're going to have mm. special activities going on there we're going to it's just going to be filled with a bunch of different like huh what is this uh nerf wars in the gym oh yeah I mean, can't go wrong with that once again absolutely family friendly food trucks will be there a bunch of activities we're still working on some that i can't tell you yet but there's going to be a, a tons of stuff happening it's from noon to eight for the whole event and then at eight o'clock we're going to have a special concert by garth guy Garth Brooks Tribute Band, who's going to be out there at, from 8 to about 9.30, uh, uh, playing music and, and uh, providing. So we'll, the bigger event will shut down at 8, but we'll still have that going on at 8 o'clock. And it's free, open to the public, and it's literally, we want to throw a party for the community to celebrate that we are Santa Cruz and we rock. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I love that. I love that, Phil. So, gosh, there's so much that you're throwing out here. There's um, so much going on here in the community, um, but I'm sure you guys have got information kind of centralized. Is there a website where you guys have, have got, because like I said, somebody's driving to work right yep. now, and yep. I know they're listening going, yeah, there really is so much going on in my community. Can't write it down. Where can I go later to, to remind myself of everything happening? So if you go to Santa High clarita.com slash events not not too long santa hyphen clarita.com slash events there'll be a list of everything coming up and you can click on it to get you know each of the events to get more information that's our hub for everything uh events related in town there's also the community calendar because mm-hmm. uh, that that one i just mentioned is uh, uh 
city specific city produced or partner events okay. but it, we the city operates a community calendar that shows everything that's happening locally and that is um i believe it's santa-corita.com slash calendar crazy okay. <laughs> so if <laughs> you're sense. you know uh, absolutely go to the events one to look at what we're doing but do also look at the calendar because there's a bunch of like i said earlier a bunch of great nonprofits doing wonderful mm -hmm. events yeah. um, and businesses like hts with their upcoming home and garden show yeah which wouldn't be on our site but will be on that calendar site okay okay so so very important to to visit both right. santa yep. clarita.com backslash Slap. events or calendar you got it and and you can get everything that's going on here in town there is a lot going on you guys produce tons of events but you're you're the arts and events manager um and, and last few years i've noticed like there's just some art thrown out there in the community we've got these bears hanging around town <laughs> talk, talk to me about these bears what are these guys doing so they actually started back in the uh, early 2000s uh we were looking for something that could be a kind of signature public art series for mm -hmm. us a way to kind of kickstart the public art thing and there was kind of a trend then of different communities yeah and we're like what is santa creta what is santa creta and then i was at the cowboy festival uh -huh. and i heard uh, one of our local historians john boston props out to you john uh tell a story about uh monarch of the mountains that was shot in the 1800s in canyon country way before we were a city mm -hmm. um, and got stuffed and the rumor is i haven't been able to confirm this but that that bear ended up in sacramento and ended up being the model for the current california state flag bear so we were like, hey, that makes perfect sense. So we started the California Bear Project, um, and the goal was to kind of have it be local first and then expand outward. Um, and we had a great local company, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, studio that uh, FX company mm -hmm. that was making the bears at us for us at cost. So they were super cheap. Well, not super cheap, but cheap enough that they would work. And we have, I believe, seven bears locally and one in El Monte. Oh, okay. Um, so we sold one. Uh, the Rotary <laughs> Club down there bought one for their 100th anniversary oh, and had cool. a local artist paint it. Mm -hmm. But the whole idea is, you know, we would provide the form and then an artist would paint it on the theme and then it get installed. So um, we have one uh, here in Old Town New Hall mm -hmm. by the New Hall Library that's history-based that was done by local artist Frank Rock. Actually, Frank's done two. There's also one over on Valencia that celebrates cycling yep. um, right at the trailhead. He, yeah. He yeah. did that one as well. We have one at our transit maintenance uh, facility um, where the buses kind of come and go out in uh, Valencia. Mm -hmm. We have uh, one at Golden Valley High School. Um, oh, they did one themselves cool. with the students doing the artwork that's on their campus. I know I'm forgetting a couple. Um, oh, we have one at Westfield Valencia Town Center. Um I don't remember. I should know where they all are. Well, you know what, Phil? Let's just leave it as an Easter egg for the community. Yeah. And if you go to SantaCreteArts.com, there's a public art tour app on there. Oh, okay. Under public art, click on public art, and it'll show you where all the public art is, not just the bears. But the bears are a lot of fun um, <laughs> because you know, they kind of pop up a little yeah. bit everywhere. So I did notice that they were kind of in the same pose as, as the California bear yeah. on, on the flag. Technically slightly different, so is we don't have okay. a trademark issue. Oh, really? <laughs> they actually trademarked our bear. Yeah, yeah. Crazy. And, and I'm a huge history guy. So that, that I did not know that story. Yeah. That is amazing. So that California bear that's on our flag was actually... That's... that's the rumor we have not been able to prove it i've heard different stories from different historians that's the thing with history that it's not necessarily everyone agrees on right Phil, don't so. come at me with fake news i'm claiming it the, the it's california a good story bear, it's a good bear story. was killed here in, in california <laughs> rip him and harambe right and then sent up to sacramento stuffed put him on the flag but he's back and he's roaming around town. there you go i absolutely what was that bear's name again Monarch of the Mountains. Monarch of the Mountains. Gosh, I, I love that. And, what a, what a great I know story. people get upset about killing animals, but apparently it had taken out like six or seven uh, uh, folks here. And so uh, uh, Colonel Lang of huh? Lang Station is apparently the one who, who shot him. So Okay, okay. So so he started it. He started what, it. it. That's what I'm All saying. Right. It was I just want to make sure you're not it was coming blame. right for him. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay, cool. <laughs> We've got the arts and events uh, manager for the city of Santa Clarita, Phil Lantis, here in studio. There's so much going on in your community. Get on that website, santa-clarita.com backslash events or backslash calendar for everything going on in your community. 
Um, you know, Phil, we, we do have to wrap, but, uh, you know, mom makes my, my, makes me put my brother on there. Uh, I'm not allowed to have anything that's my own. It's just like growing up back in the seventies. Um, but he's going to be coming on and doing a little trivia. Are you a trivia fan? Can you stick around for a little bit? I would love to. Oh, I, I will fantastic. see how I do. <laughs> fantastic. So, uh, Phil, thanks so much for coming in again. And thank you for all that you do so that we can all have cool stuff here and around town. But you stick around. Phil's going to stick around. We're going to play trivia. This is SCVI and I Lead School's Eye on the Valley. I'm Matt Watson. And this is your hometown station, KHTS. When you think about your next place... Maybe even your forever place. Are you hearing more of this? And less of this. Introducing Five Point Valencia, a vibrant new community coming to the Santa Clarita Valley. A place with parks, trails, and fresh architecture, all tuned to the way people want to live today. New homes for all, with prices to match. From the low 400,000s to over a million. Learn more at valencia.com. Comfort Keepers provides your loved one with loving in-home care. Miles McNamara, certified senior advisor and owner of Comfort Keepers in-home care. Our caregivers can help you in your own home, enhancing independence, creating safety and comfort. Our Comfort Keepers provide companionship, meal preparation, medication reminders, assistance with personal care, and even transportation to doctor's appointments. If someone you love can use a helping hand at home, visit ComfortKeepers.com. Or call 287-4200. Welcome to Dunkin', where you can always try something new, like the brown sugar oat iced latte, made with oat milk. If you're hungry, try the new omelet bites, bacon and cheddar, or egg white and veggies. Use the Dunkin' app, earn points, and get rewards. Dunkin' has two locations in the SCV, Bouquet Canyon with curbside pickup and delivery, or try the Canyon Country drive through Santa Clarita runs on Dunkin'. A Royal Suite Home Furnishings has been family owned and operated in Santa Clarita since 1978. They keep America working by stocking heritage quality furniture made right here in the USA. With high-end design and thousands of fabrics to choose from, a Royal Suite offers a wide selection of furniture at incredibly low prices. Pay 0% interest with your approved credit for 12, 24, 36, or 48 months. See store for details. Visit a Royal Suite's massive showroom on Carl Boyer Drive near Sam's Club in Santa Clarita. A Royal Suite. Sweet dreams. Your hometown station, KHTS. Welcome back. You are listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 AM. This is SCVI and I lead schools, Eye on the Valley. I am your host, Matt Watson, and uh, I'm here this morning with the City of Santa Clarita's Arts and Events Manager, Phil Lantis. And, and Phil's going to stick around and, and play with us because right now it is time for Big T's Five Minutes of Fame. You all know and love Big T. He's a longtime resident and leader in the Santa Clarita Valley. He's an executive and a philanthropist. He's an amazing father, husband, and community leader. He's a guy who, until he was 14 years old, mispronounced March Madness because he just naturally assumed that everyone was talking about our wacky Aunt Marge. Yeah, come to think of it, I, I do remember a lot of outbreaks of Marge Madness when uh, the family would get together. Here he is, mom's favorite, Big T. Welcome to the show. What's up, Maddie? How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Tony, hey, I know. Matt, do you know why Feb you, you know why February only has 28 days? That's I, so we can get to March that much quicker. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. So, um, so Big T, I've actually got a couple of friends in the studio. Uh, Phil Lantis, our arts and events manager for the city, is, is going to be joining us for trivia today. And okay. Good lovely morning, Phil. Hey, glad to meet you. And and the lovely producer Sarah is joining us. Although Sarah's not going to play today, but I think she's going to keep score. Okay. All right, so so Phil, here's how we do it. Um, Big T, he's going to throw out a question, and we have to buzz in. We buzz in by, by calling out our name. So if you know the answer, just call out Phil, and, and Patty's going to call out Patty. <laughs> Tony calls me Maddie, but that can <laughs> that can bring confusion. So I'm just going to go with – what do you think? I'll go with Frogger. Yeah, let's just say Frogger. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah I'll, I'll go with Frogger. And, and so if you know it, you call out your name, wait to be recognized by Big T, and then you can go ahead and throw out your answer and – and then that way, you know, if you get it wrong, then, then one of us can, can chime in. 
So, um, so Big T, what have you got for us this morning? Well, I got a fun fact, Matt. You know, yesterday was St. Patrick's Day. We're in the middle of March Madness. We got spring break going on. I'm thinking I got to find a fun fact that ties all those together, right? So, Matt, did you know that an actual research study commissioned by Guinness found that an estimated 162,719 pints of Irish stout go to waste every year in mustaches? The study found that 0.56 millimeters of Guinness gets trapped in the average beard or mustache with each sip. And it takes about 10 sips to finish a pint. So an <laughs> estimated 92,370 Guinness consumers every year in the U.K. have facial hair. Assuming they consume about 180 pints a year, the total cost of wasted Guinness annually in the U.K. is $536,000. And I've got to assume that that study was government funded. <sighs> You would think so, right? Hey, so the moral of the story. Shave, shave up, gentlemen. Save. Yeah. Shave and save. Shave and save. There you go. Don't waste that Guinness, gentlemen. All right. We're going to bounce around a little bit depending on how you guys do with March Madness trivia. We may bounce to some uh, some ge- ge- geography trivia and other things. But let's start first. Who are the four number one seeds in the NC2A tournament this year? Frogger. Frogger. I got Gonzaga, Arizona, Baylor, and Kansas. Good pull. Yeah, that's right. That's two, right. That's right. Two teams of the tournament have the nickname the Bulldogs. Can you name those two? Patty. Teams? Patty. Uh, Georgia. And I think Gonzaga's a Bulldog. That is incorrect. Georgia oh. did not make the tournament. They haven't made it for eight years. Oh. Yeah, Frogger. Frogger. I'm going to go with Georgia Tech and Gonzaga. Incorrect. Phil, you got anything? I, I do not sport. know sports. I'm going to put that right out up front. <laughs> He's Perfect. arts and events big team. So we have the, we have the Gonzaga, Gonzaga Bulldogs, okay. and we have the Yale Bulldogs. Oh, oh Yale, that's right. We do let those Ivy teams. Leaguers play one game. <laughs> three, three teams with the nickname Wildcats are in the tournament. Can you name two of them? Patty. Patty. The Kentucky Wildcats. Who lost, by the way? <laughs> How you like me now, How you Kentucky? Like me now? <laughs> How you like me now, Kentucky? Um, and, oh, 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 I'm blanking. Oh, I'm blanking, man. So, Patty, I'll increase your chances. There's actually four teams of the tournament with Wildcat nicknames. I know. I know Big uh, T that, forgot Kentucky. It's not helping. It's not helping. I, I I, I'm, I'm, I'm thrown for a loop. He pattied too soon. Frogger, you got anything? <laughs> yeah. Um, I'll go with, uh, Kentucky and Arizona. Oh, that, that is, correct. is also, so right. Also, also Villanova, also Davidson. Right. Uh, so the four leaf clover has a me- a meaning, one meaning for each of the four clovers. Can you name what those meanings are? Frogger. Frogger. It's got to be something spiritually related. I know that St. Patrick did use the four leaf clover to teach about um, God and religion. I'm going Father, Son, yep. Holy Ghost, and me. <laughs> <laughs> I like your line of thinking. You're 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 in the right ballpark. Anybody else? <laughs> no. <laughs> faith, faith, hope, love, and luck. Ah, oh, wow, interesting. Oh, I didn't realize that luck was a spiritual concept. That's why the four one yeah. is it's, luck, right? Because if it has three, oh, it's only the other three. Uh, I, I had heard that. Nice. Now we're that gonna, you said it out loud. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna give Phil a point for that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There yeah, we go. Let's do it. I, I'll take the pity. What U.S. city is usually considered the birthplace of spring break? Patty. Oh, oh. Patty. Is it uh, Miami? Uh, incorrect. Frogger. Frogger. I'm gonna go Fort Lauderdale. Fort Lauderdale. Fort Lauderdale is correct. There huh. we go. What state has the most electoral votes? Patty. Oh. Patty. Uh, I believe that is uh, Texas. Frogger. Texas. Incorrect. Frogger. I believe Patty's wrong. It's us, California. California. Oh. What state has the longest freshwater shoreline? Freshwater shoreline. Patty? Patty. Uh, I'm going to go with Michigan. Good pull, Patty. Michigan. Yeah, yeah. good job. <laughs> with more than 1.6 million residents, what state has the most populous capital? Um, Phil? Ooh. Phil? Is it... Oh, man. <laughs> I'm going to go California. I don't think it's right. Incorrect. Frogger. Oh. Frogger. Let's go Texas. Incorrect. Patty. Pat- Patty. Ala- Alaska. 
Uh, Arizona. Alaska. Oh. There's not that many people in the state. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's Arizona. All right. All right. Cool. And what? And what state is the baseball college World Series played every year? Baseball college. Uh, um, Frogger. Is it Pennsylvania? Correct. Patty, is it? Number. Is it? Is it? Uh, uh, Ohio. Incorrect. Phil, you got anything? Give us a state, Phil. I'll go for a random state. I'll go, go say uh, Iowa for no reason. <laughs> not, not far off in Nebraska. Oh. All right, let's pivot a little. Staring at this Greek mythology character will turn people to stone. Patty. Phil. Oh. Patty. That would be Medusa, the Gorgon. That is correct. What's a Gorgon? What is, someone who studies, what is someone who studies weather called? Patty. Oh. A, medi- uh, a meteorologist. That's correct. What two countries share the longest border in the world? Frogger. Frogger. Russia and China. Yeah, I would think so. Incorrect. Ooh. Patty? Patty. Uh, the United States and Canada? That is correct, Patty. Ooh. Patty's on fire. Patty, we're tied. And now we're getting into Patty's world. Oh, how no. Many <laughs> mi- mu- how many Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles were there? Patty. Bill. I heard Patty and Phil at the same time. Do we have a ruling, Sarah? Go for it. I'm going Phil. I'm oh. going Phil, too. Phil. Three. Phil. Three. Three. Correct. Pat, well, Patty, that's Patty? that's four. Yeah. Oh, I was going to three four. also. <laughs> what okay. was the first chain of Mexican restaurants in the United States Frogger. called? Frogger. El Torito. <laughs> Incorrect. This one hurts me. Anybody? I got nothing. Uh, don't. I'll go for it. This is Phil. Chi Cheese? Phil. Chi Chi's? Incorrect. Okay. Phil, we can't say that on the air. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. Taco Bell. Taco Bell. I was Bell. thinking that. Yeah, I didn't that, want to think that's that. painful. Right? right? How many dwarfs are there in Snow White? Frogger. Frogger. Seven. Seven is correct. Now, were you going to say many? how many dwarfs were there in Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs? <laughs> no. Okay. No. Okay. And, and hey, just because you have knowledge of Big T doesn't mean you can throw it out there. <laughs> there was the eighth one they didn't talk about, but we won't go into that now. Oh, okay. Wow. Wow. How many seasons of American Idol have there been? Oh, I don't know. Frogger. Phil. Frogger, then Phil. 22. Incorrect, Phil. 21. Incorrect. Patty. Oh. Patty. 23. Incorrect. They're oh. in their 20th season right now. Oh, should have gone the other way. <laughs> How many nights are celebrated in Hanukkah? Frogger. Frogger. Eight crazy nights. <laughs> Adam Sandler movie. Eight nights. <laughs> in the Twilight series book, New Moon, what's the last name of the family? I don't know. I didn't read it. Frogger. Frogger. Miller. Greg, <laughs> the Collins. Oh well, oh yeah, I was, that was <laughs> oh, my second guess. Oh, it's Robert <laughs> Pattinson, right, right? Of course. Hey, in Harry Potter and the Half Blood Prince, Felix, Felix's is what? Patty, it mispronounced. Patty. Liquid Luck. Liquid Luck is correct. What video game series has a place called Vice City? Patty. Patty. That is GTA Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> GTA, correct. <laughs> What sport uses a shuttlecock? Frogger. A what? Frogger. Badminton. Badminton's correct. One more question, T. What? All right. What sporting event is held every year on Memorial Day? Frogger. Frogger. Kentucky Derby. Incorrect. It is a race, though. Patty. Patty. Daytona. Uh, incorrect. Different car race. So you got it. Uh, Indianapolis Five Hundred. It is the end of that. Hey! Hey! Nice pull, Phil. Nice pull. <laughs> Unfortunately, Frogger and Patty tied for the lead on uh, on this round. Big T, thanks for popping by as always. I want to thank Wendy Ruiz, the director of Little Eye Leaders Preschool, Arts and Events Manager of the City of Santa Clarita, Phil Lantis, Big T, Producer Sarah, Engineer Patty, my protégés, Renata, Piper, Penny, Miley, Peyton, and thank you for listening. Join us every Friday, 8 to 10 a.m. on Eye on the Valley on your hometown station, KHTS.